Hello everyone. Today we'll read Exodus chapter 27 verse 16. And for the gate of the court shall be a hanging of 20 cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework and their pillars shall be four and their sockets four. I read one verse. In this tabernacle, there's only one gate. So unless you go to this gate, there's no way for you to enter inside of this tabernacle. Jesus has said, I am the door. I am the way. This door, this gate of the tabernacle is also representing of the Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only the way. Jesus, he was the only one who crucified on the cross and died for our sins. So in this world, there is no any other religion to have solution for our sin. And this gate of the tabernacle is made with four different colors. So this whole like, uh, like fence of the tabernacle is white uh, twine linen. But uh, this uh, gate has four different colors. Uh, blue and purple and scarlet, which is red and uh, white, which is uh, fine twine linen. So uh, only this gate has many colors. Uh, it means Jesus, he was, uh, he had a totally different color from uh, this world. Jesus, he never uh, mixed his color with this world. His life was totally different from uh, all the people in this world. In Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, We all have sinned and come short of glory of God. Everybody in this world have committed sin and will commit sin again. But there is only one who never commits sin in this world. If you read uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, it says, Jesus, he received a temptation just like how we received, but he never commits sin. So he is the only one who never commit any sin. When uh, people uh, brought the woman who caught in the very act in other tree to Jesus, people asked Jesus, should we uh, kill her or not kill her? This is uh, the way how people are thinking. When we preach the gospel about blood of Jesus, people ask me, so pastor, you said the blood of Jesus washed all our sins, so should we just keep sin? Bible is giving us a totally different answer from what we expect. People expect the answer like, no, you shouldn't commit sin, or uh, okay, it's uh, fine for you to commit sin. People is asking, like people is expecting this kind of answer. Bible uh, doesn't say you should keep sin or you shouldn't commit sin, but Bible said you are already dead in sin. When we try to change ourselves, Bible is telling us that no, you are already new creature. When we try to be righteous, Bible is already telling us no, blood of Jesus already washed all your sins and just believe that He already made you righteous. When we try to become righteous, there's no way for us to be righteous. And there's no way for us to change ourselves because the desire of sin is much stronger than our will. But when we connect our heart with the heart of God, this heart of God is uh, creating new heart that we never had before inside of our heart. Bible is telling us, no, you are already justified, you are already washed, you are already sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So uh, this woman was dragged before Jesus and people asked him, 
according to the law of Moses, we have to kill her. But what would you say? People was expecting for Jesus to answer, kill her or don't kill her. That's why they were so excited because they wanted to kill Jesus. Now, if Jesus said, kill her, people would say, hey, you say you are a savior for sinner, but you cannot save this sinner. He's a liar. Let's kill him. But if Jesus say, okay, she's so beautiful, so don't kill her. Then people would say, hey, you say you are son of God, but you are breaking the law of God. He's a liar. Then let's kill him. So people were uh, expecting for Jesus to say, kill her or don't kill her. But Jesus, he answered totally different answer from what people expected. Jesus said, Amongst you, the one who without sin stoned her first. You know, that was totally different answer from what people expected. You know, when everybody call me a sinner, everybody are telling me that you are a sinner. You know, even myself, I was telling myself that I'm a sinner because I do commit sin. There is only one uh, say different thing from what other people say to me. It was Bible. Bible says, but you are washed, but you are justified, but you are sanctified by the, uh, by the, uh, by the, uh, the the Jesus and the Spirit of our God. So, First uh, Corinthians chapter six verse eleven said, "Yes, people who commit sin cannot go to heaven, and such you are such some of uh, you are such people like that. But all your sins were washed. But you are sanctified. You are made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ." But you are justified. Now it is God who justified us. The who can against us. Bible is telling us totally different things from our heart and our knowledge that we learn from the world. Here, so uh, when we preach the word, when we uh, preach the faith, the, the word doesn't like that. So Christians are supposed to receive persecutions from the world because what we preach is totally different from what this world preach. For example, this world is preaching, uh, teaching us that trust yourself, believe in yourself, do what you want to do, and love yourself, listen to your heart. Basically, this is what this word is teaching us. But Bible telling us, your thoughts and God's thoughts are totally different. So, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to forsake your thoughts and deny yourself. Bible didn't say love yourself, but Bible says, whosoever love yourself, whosoever uh, like don't uh, hate yourself, you cannot uh, love Jesus. So Bible is telling us, love Jesus, not yourself. If we love our flesh, if we love ourselves, how can we receive persecution for the gospel? This Bible is telling us totally different thing from what we are expecting. One day, one brother uh, came to me and asked, Pastor, why God, get, uh, God doesn't give me grace? You know, I've been preached the gospel and I try to invite people and try to preach the gospel, but why nobody uh, receives salvation? And I asked him, Brother, what is the grace that you want to receive? Pastor, of course, since I'm preaching the gospel, I want many people to come to me and they listen to my sermon and then they receive salvation and then they say, oh, thank you, Pastor. I ask, brother, 
brother for you to preach the gospel. Don't you think that's grace? You know, many people, they expect grace from God according to their uh, expectation, according to their standard. But when actually they receive grace from God, many people don't think that's grace. You know, as a, like, we were sinner, and when we think about how we are, we are not the people. We are not the people who uh, love Jesus, who love the gospel. But you know, God is leading us to preach the gospel. God is leading us to pray. This is grace. We are not the people who love God, who love Jesus. But God is putting love inside of our heart. Then we can serve God. Many people. They receive something from uh, God. They think this is grace, but not many people think I'm able to serve God today. I I am able to worship God today. Oh, I received grace. Not many people think this way. You know, if you go to China, and many missionaries is run away from the police because they don't have freedom to uh, preach the gospel in China and gather people and uh, minister them. So, you know, in uh, our brothers and Ch uh, brothers and sisters in China, they like uh, worship in their houses, and one day they come to our uh, church, and they say, "Pastor, you know, like I'm so happy that I can uh, praise Lord, like with this uh, loud voice." You know, in China, many brothers and sisters cannot sing loudly. Oh, if we uh, follow the knowledge of the word, we cannot follow the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If we follow our own heart, we cannot follow the heart of God. So you have to choose one, whether you serve God, whether you serve yourself. Satan is not are uh, telling uh, Christians that uh, Bible is lying. But Satan is telling us to trust ourselves and making us to not, uh, be a not be able to trust the Word of God, which is different from our thoughts. So, always people of faith was receiving persecution from the Word. And uh, they wasn't able to mix with the word. If you feel like oh, I am not really able to be uh, mixed with this word, that's not really bad thing. Martin Luther, he was the uh, priest of the Catholic Church, but he wasn't able to be mixed with the knowledge which is different from the Bible. So he actually he didn't want it to be separated from the Catholic, but he just wanted to like a calling for the Reformation. So eventually, Martin Luther was rejected from the Catholic. So even though he wanted to be together, but he wasn't able to stay with them. John Wesley he was a like pastor of the uh, Epi Episcopal Church from UK. He uh, didn't mean to uh, form another denomination. But while he preached the gospel, he wasn't able to be mixed with Episcopal. Uh, what he preached was being justified and become righteous. One day he met a Moravian church uh, the, uh, people and then he was shocked because he never thought himself he's righteous but what he heard from uh, them and when he read the Bible actually Bible is written the just shall live by faith so he wasn't just he thought I'm not righteous but in the Bible there's a righteous Noah was righteous 
Abraham was righteous. And he started to think, ah, oh, there's righteous. It means there must be the way for me to become righteous as well. And then he was able to realize the gospel. And he, while he was preaching, like he was being rejected from the Episcopal Church. You know, people who are telling uh, faith, who is speaking by faith, uh, cannot be uh, mixed with this word. Always, the color of Jesus and color of this word was different. But, you know, uh, this color of this gate, anybody can see from anywhere because this color is so obvious and it was very clear. It was very much different from other colors. Yes, in order for us to come to the gate, you have to go to the west side. Many people, we want to go to the east side, which is sunrise. But in order for us to meet Jesus, we have to go to the west side. The wise, uh, three wise men from the east, they came from the east. It means they were uh, going to the west to meet Jesus. This, uh, in order for us to go to the gate, in order for us to meet Jesus, we need to go to the place where our hope ends. Jesus, he explained uh, the Good Samaritan story to uh, the lawyer. And in this story, the person who fell among thieves, when he wasn't able to do anything, when he had that and he lost all the hope, in there, Good Samaritan came to the place where he was. Right. That's the place we meet Jesus. The gate is in the west side. But when you go to the west side, you can see clearly where the gate is because it has totally different color from any other things. People feel like uh, weird or strange or awkward when they uh, see something different from their heart or their standard. So when we preach the word, when we preach true gospel, we will be rejected by the word. You know, when I uh, went to uh, Thailand, I have tasted uh, durian. You know, uh, durian has nickname. It's uh, smell of hell and taste of the heaven. So I didn't know what that was. But when I uh, came back to the hotel, I smell some kind of like, I don't know what the smell is. It's not toilet smell. It's not like some rot. It's similar from rotten smell, but I don't know what that is. But it was kind of terrible. Hey, what is this smell? And in our lobby, uh, in our like living room, there was uh, like one plate and there was one fruit that I never seen before. It looks kind of awkward, but smell was more terrible. So like uh, people, uh, native people from Thailand asked me to try it. I tried to try it, but I wasn't able to do it. The next day they brought durian again. So by force, I had to eat it. And then it, was re it wasn't really good experience. But I went to Thailand four times. Every time I went to Thailand, like they brought me to uh, brought me uh, durian. Actually, I went there for the mission work. I wasn't able to keep reject uh, the food that they gave me. So I ate it one time and twice. But amazing thing is, when I went to Thailand a second time and taste uh, the durian, 
I couldn't really smell like before. Hey, I think this durian is different from what I ate before. And they smiled and said, no, it's the same thing. Following year, when I ate this, uh, durian, I wasn't able to smell anything but it was very sweet. And for for time, I didn't want to eat any other durian, uh, any other fruits, but I was looking for durian. Hey, where's durian? I want that. You know, every fruit has taste, but this durian has strong taste. But I wasn't able to taste the true taste of durian while I uh, smell the smell of durian. I wasn't really used to be in this smell. But when I get used to it uh, in this smell, when I was able to taste the true taste of durian, it was a uh, most delicious fruit that I have uh, uh, amongst the fruit that I have uh, tried before. You know, every people in this world, we have a taste. There's a taste that Pastor Gabriela has. There's a taste Brother Joseph has. There's a taste the uh, Mercy has. That everybody has their own taste. We cannot say Ah, uh, her taste is not delicious. Ah, uh, his taste is really good. Because everybody has different taste. Different in mint, uh, it's different. That doesn't mean it's wrong. So everybody has different taste. But there is one who has a strongest taste in the world. The one who has strongest taste is Jesus Christ. Jesus, while he was in the world, he had a strongest taste. But people didn't really like that. But one who, uh, one who was able to taste true taste of Jesus, they cannot uh, fall into any other taste. The woman who caught in the very act in other tree. She was lustful woman. But you know, the reason why we fall into the lust, re reason why we fall into the any other evil things, it's because we don't know better taste than this lust and other desires. The reason why many young people fall into sin, it's because they don't know the better happiness. So in our organization, Rather than we tell them to be, rather than we tell them to stop committing sin, rather than we tell them to stop smoking or drinking, we try to make these students to be most happy people in the world. If they can feel true happiness, they wouldn't fall into sin anymore. This woman, she knew the taste of the lust. She knew the taste of the world. But she didn't know the taste of Jesus Christ. So she was falling into sin even though that wasn't, that wasn't the life that she wanted to live. But one day, she met Jesus. And Jesus spoke to her a few words. And now, she had become most the happiest person in that village. Now everybody left Jesus, but this woman wasn't able to leave Jesus because she tasted the taste of Jesus Christ. And this taste of Jesus changed her life. When we see this woman, this woman was full of lust. When she was caught by people, her heart was filled with fear. But Jesus filled her heart with the happiness and joy. Yes, the color of Jesus is totally different from uh, our own colors. But He is the only way. He is the only the door 
for us to come to God and for us to be blessed, for us to receive salvation. If you cannot stop sin, if you cannot win over your sin, if there is no way for you to become righteous, if you are a sinner, there is the way for you to become righteous. There is the way for you to become perfect in Jesus. He is the way. There is no any other ways. Yes, this way might be different from this world. But He is only the way that God gave us. Uh, today, we will finish up to here. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to watch our coming sermon, please subscribe.